laid out, you made your case on the stage. Yep. Um, make your case here for, for our viewers on why this company is now towards the top of your watch list. So we've been short this for a couple of years. Um, uh, and the real problem is a set of developments that have occurred this year that I think put its model at risk. First and foremost, uh, a lawsuit was filed this spring by Florida Blue Cross, which lays out the entire reimbursement scam, if you will. I think it may be actually crossing the line based on a further development, uh, in which basically DeVita uh, attempts to move its Medicare and Medicaid patients, the vast uh, majority of dialysis patients, are old and lower income. Uh, they try to move the patients into Obamacare policies. Uh, no pre-existing conditions cannot be denied. Whereby uh, they charge the in commercial insurers three to four X what they get in Medicare and Medicaid. Uh, why would they do this? Why would the patient do this? Because obviously there's a premium to be paid. Well, there's better service. There's maybe lower wait times, uh, more convenient. The issue is, is that off, these patients often cannot afford that premium. And so what's happening is, is that DaVita and the number two player, Fresenius, are pushing them to the American Kidney Fund, which is a charity. The American Kidney Fund is funded almost 90% last year by DaVita and Fresenius. The American Kidney Fund pays some, most, or all of your premium for your Obamacare policy, which can be considerable. It can be ten or $15,000. They then, of course, charge the insurers 4X and multiples of the 10 to 15,000, as much as 15 to 20 times that. The problem for DeVita, and this has been going on for a while, and, and Blue Cross lays this out. The real problem is, is the safe harbor that they've been operating on, which is new, was that they could not direct the American Kidney Fund specifically to cover Josh Brown or cover Scott Wapner. A whistleblower uh, suit was unsealed this summer in which an American Kidney Fund employee who was in the Charitable Assistance Division said exactly the opposite, that they were directing patients. If that's true, they have a massive legal problem. Are you, are you alleging fraud? Well, that would be fraud. That would be violating, uh, that would be violating the, the federal Medicare and, and uh, anti-kickback statute. What do you think Berkshire Hathaway sees in this to be long the stock? What, they you, could buy anything. You, I mean, it's an obvious question because yeah. you'd right. say, and so I mean, you have theoretically, to, they've done diligence on, on this position. You must have read what you've said. You, you have to ask them. I always get this question every time I bring a short position up and someone else is on the other side of the trade. Well, what do they see? And I just have, I have to say, you have to ask them. We reached out, by the way. Um, we're still waiting for a response from, from Berkshire. But, but, but in, Josh, in any case, it's a bad look for an insurance company to be involved in this. And Berkshire Hathaway, for, for lack of it, is, is an insurance if, company. If, if, of course, what you, what you say is, is, is the case. Well, all you have to do is read DeVito's 10K. There's, there's tens of pages of risk factors, including talking about this reimbursement scheme. But you also have additional opioid liability in this conversation. Well, there's possible. Well. No, well, we, we, potential. We, they're potential. They, they're, there was a study that we were referred to that came out in 2017 by a fellow named Kimmel. You can Google it. Uh, under dialysis and opioids, and he found uh, uh, in this, this very extensive study that opioid patients recently have been far more likely to be getting chronic overdosage of opioids. They're not supposed to be getting, according to the literature, opioids at all. It's only a last resort. It's supposed to be using acetaminophen. Um, and so what, what, what we're saying is, is that in this environment with plaintiff's bar, DeVita has an actual doctor that's an employee in every center, a medical director. That doctor has to be seeing what meds these patients are on. And in many cases, the opioids, as we point out in our, in our presentation, uh, many of the chronic opioid dialysis patients are getting prescriptions from more than one doctor. Decent mix of buys and holds on the street, no sells. Um, yep. I mean, so you're saying that this sort of well, everybody's met, Berkshire's well, missing it, the street's well, missing it. Well, what's even more interesting, Scott, is that this company hasn't had any earnings growth since 2010. Earnings last year were below 2010's level, uh, adjusted for you know charges and all the rest of that stuff, uh, despite billions of dollars of share buybacks. So there's been no growth in this business uh, for 10 years, despite the share buybacks. There's one other interesting thing: the quality of earnings is very low here. Devita over the past five years has averaged capex and acquisitions, despite no growth, 
of almost two times their depreciation. And if you normalize that depreciation for what they're actually spending, the company is earning less than two dollars a share with a stock, I think, at sixty bucks. So this is this, this is, is a, not cheap. This is a market cap of ten billion dollars, enterprise value of twenty. Yeah. Assuming the debt is at a higher rate than what Berkshire would have to pay if they assumed it, we've seen Berkshire take a stake in, for example, Precision Cast Parts, right. and then eventually buy the whole thing. Yeah. Is that your big risk here? That well, they, they, they had say, a stake, you know what, we'll take it. They had a stake in a company we were short uh, called Teva Pharmaceuticals, and they, they didn't they didn't take a right. you know, they didn't buy that one, and it's down quite People a bit. People probably asked you the same thing about and, that. And, exactly. Right. And 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 so I think that uh, again, you know, Charlie Munger famously called another short of ours, Valley, a sewer. And if you look at the fact that this company has paid a billion two in fines to the federal government and, and state governments over the past 10 years, and this is kind of a chronic offender. Um, but the real issue is the reimbursement mechanism. If we get any kind of you know, attempt at, at Medicare option, Medicare for all, or they simply, the commercial insurers successfully push back at the federal level on this scheme, this charitable reimbursement scheme, and this is what has tripped up Malincrot. This is what tripped up uh, uh, a number of the especially drug companies. Uh, Valiant was using charitable assistance. This charitable assistance is a really, really uh, risk factor that I don't think the market is discounting enough.